Cross Border Interview, the show where we sit down with local elected leaders from all corners of this great country. Now, over the course of this episode, we'll be learning about who our guest is, what drives them, and how they're working to make their community a better place for everyone. Today, we are honored to be sitting down with Westville, Nova Scotia Mayor Lenny White. But before we do that, I want to take a moment and say thank you. Thank you to all of our subscribers, big and small. Your contributions every month annually help make this show better. We couldn't do this show without you. If you want to join the growing list of supporters of the Cross Border Interviews, head over to our Cross Border Interviews website at www.crossborderinterviews.ca and hit the support link now. All contributions, big and small, make a massive difference in engaging and contributing to the mission that is the cross-border interviews. Now, on to the show. Lenny, I want to thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. And I want to start with sort of a generic question, but it's the question I've asked every single municipal leader who's ever come on the show. So you're no exception to it. And that is, where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from, Lenny? Yeah, it's an interesting question, you know, one that I've thought about, because uh, I, I knew you were going to ask that, Chris, because I have seen some of your previous interviews. So full disclosure, um, <laughs> you know, I, I think it goes back to a long time ago when I, you know, when I was a very young uh, man, I guess, and uh, maybe even before that. Uh, but basically, soon out of uh, university, I I joined uh, the Kinsman organization, and I, I have to give the Kinsman organization uh, credit for instilling in me that that interest in community and and service and uh, from that uh, it just went from there really and that was that was my initial foray into community involvement I must say and very quickly after that joining Kinsman and at that time uh, I guess still to this day it was a young considered to be a young person's uh, uh, organization um, and so I was in my twenties uh, just out of university. Uh, joined that organization, became involved in the community. I was living in Kentville in the Valley in Nova Scotia at the time. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, after being in Kinsman for a couple of years, there was a municipal election coming up in the town of Kentville. And some of us were sitting around after a meeting one night and someone said, uh, you know, we're a, we're a pretty involved uh, organization. We should have someone representing us on council. We should have someone run for council. So I think that, as I recall, there were probably six or seven of us sitting around a table and they said, well, who's going to be the candidate? And I, as I recall, I think uh, we, we, we cut cards or, or, or deal, dealt cards out and uh, I was the lucky winner of the highest card as i recall so i i ran for municipal for for town council at that time i was i was just uh, coming up to my 30th birthday at the time and um was successful because we you know i had a great organization behind me and uh knowing nothing about municipal politics i must admit uh was elected to town council in the town of kentville uh, back many years ago and that was my uh, you know and then from there on it just you know, went at uh, warp speed as far as my involvement in community activities, I must say. So there's a lot to unpack there, but I want to kind of get to the crux of who you are a little bit, because it seems like you came to municipal politics literally by the luck of the cards. Uh, and I want to start sort of uh, with young Lenny, if possible. Was politics discussed at the dinner table? Like, did you talk about politics or with your mom and dad? Was it something that was discussed or... And when I asked that question, was it more provincial politics that was discussed or federal or because you're municipally, was municipal politics discussed at the dinner table? And did you have an interest in it before yeah. you sort of, like I said, the luck of the draw of the cards and you right. became a council? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, you know, not to a great degree. Um, um, I must say. I was certainly aware growing up in a small, and once, a, once again, just so you know, I, I grew up in a, another small town in Pictou County here nearby, uh, joining one of our adjoining towns in the town of Trenton. And I was aware, you know, as a teenager and in, in high school in particular, I certainly was aware of municipal, of who the mayor was and, and who the councillors were and so on, and had some interaction with them in, in a youth group that I, so I guess now that I think of this, that was the beginning, actually, now that I say that, uh, of a youth group that was formed uh, in the town. 
uh, and I was involved in that. And that was my uh, that was my knowledge of municipal politics to that degree. And and no, it wasn't greatly discussed. Although I must say, I I think I developed an interest uh, at that point in time. And and when I was in university. Uh, uh, the federal election came upon us, uh, and when I was back home here in Pictou County, uh, got involved uh, in uh, in one of the parties uh, uh, as a youth, you know, as a youth member. So it started there, really. Yes. So from that point on, I, I certainly had a had more than a passing interest in in politics, and in fact, uh, you know, at university, I, I majored in, and graduated to, with a major in political science. But I do remember one of my first political science uh, professors uh, making the caveat that, you know, political science is not a place to, uh, for, for uh, you know, uh, beginning your political career. It's a study of politics. It's not a, and I do remember that very well. It sounds like my professor at university as well when I took yeah. that course and they said that's so, relatively you know, what you said. If you're coming into here to be the next mayor or counselor, yeah. you're in the wrong job. Right, right, exactly. So they all have that handbook, I guess. So how does a kid from sort of a, a lot of places, it sounds like, become a counselor and then mayor? Was politics something that you wanted to get involved with at an early age or it sort of sparked when you got elected in uh, you know, in Kentville and then transferred over when you became counselor in 2012 for the town of Westville? Yeah, interestingly enough, I mean, there's a there's a big gap there. I I served three years back then. The term was three years yeah. on council in Nova Scotia. Now it's four um, in Kentville. I only served the one term, three years, and um, after that time, really had no involvement politically. Um, I did. I must say, I'll, I'll, I better be full full disclosure. Um, what happened was I I was recruited. Uh, for a provincial in the provincial election came up in my in my third year on council in Kentville, and I was approached by uh, two of the parties. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, Always and, the case, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, I, I did run in the provincial election in Kings North and a riding in Nova Scotia uh, in that area of the valley. Um, and, you know, timing, as they say, is everything in politics. I was too young to appreciate that fact, I believe, at that time. Um, I ran as a liberal and the Tories were a stronghold, had a juggernaut stronghold on the riding that I was in and, and indeed throughout the province at that time. Uh, that was the, if you're familiar with politics at all in Nova Scotia, that was the John Buchanan era. Uh, he was the premier at the time. And, you know, I, I learned uh, probably the first day out campaigning with my campaign manager that I had made a, a, a very bad choice of time with regard to timing. And consequently, uh, you know, just to put a full cap on this, uh, when I ran in the, for the town election in Kentville, uh, I finished first in the polls. Uh, as a newbie, uh, a young guy, um, and after running as a liberal and being defeated soundly in the provincial election, uh, that was the, basically the end of my municipal career in the town of Kentville. So uh, after that, I, I moved on. I, I, I Several years later, I moved uh, once again, uh, moved to Cape Breton. I was there for almost 20 years, was not involved in politics to any degree there. But I was involved in community activities. You know, I, I belonged to, I, I, I went from uh, Kinsman to Rotary. Uh, I was involved in the United Way, uh, Terry Fox uh, organizations, and a lot of other community organizations. But I was not, you know, involved in municipal politics to any degree. So moved back to Pictou County in, in 2008 um, and sort of, you know, it's, it's like anything else, I guess, when you when you grew up somewhere and then you move away for, you know, in my case, uh, 40 years, basically, uh, come back, you see it totally differently. And you bring with you some of the things that you've seen in other places, probably. And so I had a different view and I, I saw Pictou County um, and I started uh, 
sort of voicing my opinion that we have six municipal units in Pictou County, just so you get the lay of the land a little bit. We have six municipal units in, in Pictou County with a population, overall population of, you know, some 45,000 people uh, between the six units. Uh, and, and to me, it just did not make a lot of sense. And so I, I started uh, a letter, I, I wrote some letters to the editor, you know, expressing my view that, uh, you know, why are we not one in Pictou County? Why don't we have a regional government? And from that, people came to me and said, uh, Lenny, uh, you know, I agree 100%. Uh, you need to uh, champion this. And so we formed a, a citizen group. Uh, so I, I formed, a, I was forced to form a citizens group. And uh, from that, then logically came the expression, well, municipal elections are coming up. Uh, if you want a real voice, why aren't you on your town council? And I was living in Westville. We we moved back from, from Cape Breton to Westville. Uh, in 2008, and uh, and resided and and uh, set down here at roots in in Westville, and so 2012 rolls around, and uh, so I put my name forward for council, and uh, lo and behold, uh, was elected, acclaimed, I might add. Uh, so that shows you the degree of interest. Uh, in any event, that's that was that was how I became uh, a member of town council. Um, there's a lot to unpack there, but I want to start with this big question because this is a unique question that I can only ask a certain amount of people because you have an, you have an extensive career in politics. You have uh, three years as a councillor for Kentville and then time as Westville and then you ran provincially. Now, the role of municipal government has changed a lot over the last 10 years. And I say 10 years because oh. it has over the last 10 years. For you, though, I can imagine you have noticed a bigger change that most people would probably see today themselves because you have your previous experience as a councillor from Kentville and your time as a councillor and mayor for the town of Westville. In your opinion, how, how how much and what are the major changes that you have seen in municipal governance and municipal politics over the last 20, 30 years? Yeah, uh, you know, significant, major, major change uh, from my recollection of, uh, you know, politics uh, municipally uh, involvement back in 1979. I was elected, by the way, just so you know. So, you know, you can do the math. But 1979 um, compared to, you know, 2012 when I was uh, became a councillor here in Westville. Uh, the role, uh, certainly... One thing I would say is that certainly uh, it's more onerous. There's 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 more to do. There's there's a it's a it's a much broader sort of uh, uh, plate of uh, of responsibility and, and 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 activity that we're involved in municipally now, as I recall back then, um, and the and also sort of citizen involvement and knowledge of, of municipal government, to my uh, estimation, has changed as well. Not to mention, and I'm sure you've heard this, is uh, you know some downloading of uh, what we rightly would be determined would be considered previously to be municipal responsibilities down uh, to the municipal level. So, yeah, it, it's uh, it, it's changed greatly, and uh, and even even Chris uh, from 2012 until now, uh, significant change that I've seen uh, since coming on council back in 2012 to 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 currently uh you know it's becoming i i jokingly say to people as mayor i i don't know how someone who has a full-time job could be the mayor of a small town because uh you know and i and i say this with no expectation of you know oh that's fantastic you know great to, I'm not saying it for myself uh sort of uh you know of uh Patting yourself on the back, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I and I say this uh, honestly that there has not been a day since I became mayor that I haven't done something related to position of being mayor, of the town of Westville. You know, it, some days it's it's minor, some days it, you know maybe email, a couple emails, a phone call, uh, or preparing something. But there has not literally been one single day uh, since 2019 when I became mayor. Uh, to today that there hasn't been something that I've done related to it. So, you know, that's, that's a, that's a major change. And so you know, how do you balance that? I apologize well, to interrupt, but how do you balance that? Because there's probably days that you just want to be Lenny and yeah. go do whatever you want to do by yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you go out, you're going to be mayor and people are going to know who you are because I'm assuming yeah. 
Uh, you don't get acclaimed. You don't get reelected to a council of people don't know and don't like you. Uh, so how do you how do you balance the life of a small town uh, community leader with being just yourself and just trying to blow off steam from time to time? Yeah, it's it's it's. Uh, I don't find it difficult to be very honest. I don't find it difficult to do that. I, I, um, you know, I enjoy my my free time, and and people, you know, one of the great things about a small community such as ours, I, you know, most people are understanding of that fact that they can separate, uh, you know, when you have your mayor's hat on or when you need to be in your mayor's role to when you're just being, you know, citizen resident. Uh, Lenny White. And like I, you know, I say to people, you know, I'm no different than anybody else. I'm a, I'm a resident of this town. And, uh, you know, so um, you want what's best for, 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 for everyone. And, and no, I, I, I don't, you know, um, I guess, yes, t- from a time perspective, there, there have been some times when there's things that I wanted to partake in or, or do or, or attend or, or go away or do whatever when there's been events going on in town that I just uh, deemed that I, I couldn't do that. So you make those sacrifices, but it's, it's you know, you don't do this job uh, unless, uh, you know, you, you have a passion for it and you, and it's something you enjoy doing. And I, I, I thoroughly enjoy doing it. And it's like, I've said this, uh, you know, any volunteer job that you do, and I learned this very early, you, you always, you get more out of it than you put in, you know, and, and that's sort of still the same way I see this mayor's position. There are things that I thoroughly enjoy about being the mayor and uh, there's things obviously that, you know, are, are difficult, but uh, by and large, yeah, that's, that that so, so to, to have the, the freedom, uh, you know, to, to make the, the, the difference distinction between personal and, and, and the role, um, I, I don't have a great difficulty with that. I don't not believe. I want to pick up on something else you said in that uh, statement a few minutes ago, and that was about sort of the misunderstanding of jurisdictional roles uh, mm-hmm. between provincial, municipal, and federal. And I yeah. agree with you. I think there's a big misunderstanding or lack of understanding. And I, this is Chris's opinion. This is not the mayor saying this is Chris saying right. this for those who right. are listening to this right now. I think there's a very big lack of understanding about the jurisdictional roles that municipalities play. Um, but you are the ones who deal with the most uh, issues on a day-to-day basis, whether it be provincial, federal, or even municipal, they will come. P- residents will come up to your local uh, municipal elected leaders, mayor, councillor, and talk about issues that are outside your purview. How do you balance that w- aspect of the job? Because you can't tell somebody this isn't the responsibility of the mayor, because then they're going to feel like they're not being heard or being brushed off. So as mayor, when you hear someone talk about provincial or federal issues, how do you respond to make them feel like they've been heard, but also make sure that they feel like their issue might get resolved? Yeah, I very good question. Um, yeah, and and you you said something that I pick up on, and that is they want to be heard. And, you know, I truly believe that, that in most cases, when someone comes with an issue or a question or a concern, they're just, they basically, the biggest thing that they're looking for is just that, to be heard. And so I'm a talker, I'm a very sociable person. I, you know, I, I, and so, but I have to remind myself, you know, you have one mouth and two ears. And so you have to, you have to engage that listening aspect. And it's the same with the, you know, those, those issues between, provincial, municipal, and so on. You're absolutely right. Um, people don't have a great understanding. But I I generally, I, I call it my civic lesson. I, I generally take the time to to try, you know, I certainly want to listen. And if there's something that I can do, certainly I will do that. And maybe I have uh, some knowledge of who to go to or or how to get a hold of the, the right person provincially or federally to assist this person. And I'll certainly do that. But the other thing, even, even, even below that, is the understanding of what you can do as the mayor or a council person, as opposed to, you know, the people that uh, are operational that do the daily, look after the day-to-day operation of the town. So I always take time to do that little civic lesson as well, you know, to explain here, you know, council is a policy body. Here's what we're able to do as mayor, um, you know, I have one vote on council. We have a council of four four councillors and a mayor. I have the same vote that that all the other four councillors have. So 
uh, and explain that we have people that, you know, do the day-to-day -day operation of the town. And uh, there's one person that report, reports to council and to the mayor, and that's the CAO. Everybody else reports to the CAO. So I, I, I take time, you know, I don't dismiss them out of hand, hopefully. I, I try to listen. I, you know, previous lifetime, I was a social worker. Uh, so I learned this, you know, hopefully learn some of those skills of, of listening, active listening, as it's called. And uh, so I try to employ that in, in whatever dealings I have with people. But yeah, it's, it's, it, you do spend a fair amount of time explaining the, the difference between the, the different levels of government, no question. The listening is a key aspect I want to pick up on a little bit here because you're right. As a municipal councillor, you have to listen to and listen to people of your community. And you know, and you've been in politics for some time now, so you probably are aware that you're not going to please 100% of the people 100% of the time. So how do you, especially in today's hyper-partisan world that we live in, where social media is running rampant with people attacking people through personalities, how do you respectfully listen to people who disagree with you in a respectful manner to make sure that they feel respected that even though you may disagree with them a hundred percent, you still are listening to them. Yeah. And that's, that's, <laughs> that's the difficult one. And, and yes, you're absolutely right. That, that polarization that's happening and, and the, uh, you know, the, 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 I don't even know how to put it, but the, the different level of, of, uh, you know, anger and, and, and uh, social media certainly has, has it gotten worse since COVID? Absolutely. Yes. No question. I, I believe that. Um, yeah. And it's, a, it, it certainly has changed since COVID. And, but, you know, to go to your question, uh, once again, I, I, it, it's just that listening. I, the best example I can give, I did have a couple come in, a, um, you know, a month or so ago uh, to see me and um, were diabolically, you know, diametrically, I should say, can, uh, not by, but not, they weren't diabolical uh, uh, in a different view of certain issues than I was and totally, you know, we had no common ground whatsoever, but I did you engage that active listening and I did listen and I, and I, you know, I, I used that skill to feed back to them what I thought they were trying to say to me. And so that I was understanding what they were saying. And, you know, after a half an hour or so of discussion here in my office, I, I basically said to them, look, you know, I appreciate you coming by. We could talk for the rest of the day and we're probably never going to i'm not going to change your opinion and you know what you're not going to change my opinion but i appreciate the fact that you have that opinion and you know what they said to me was which i thought was interesting well we just thought it was important upon us that if we had this view that we express it and we and we talk to you about it and i said so are we all good now and the answer was yeah, thank you very much. We, we're, we're, we're more than happy that you took the time to do this. And wow. so that's just a brief example of, you know, uh, now, you know, that's one of the, they don't all turn out that way. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> right. But, but it can, you know, and, and hopefully if you're, if you're sincere enough and, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, people misunderstand where you're coming from or whatever, but, it, but if you can listen and, and, and feedback, like I say, make sure that you're under, understanding what they're saying to you, hopefully that can be an outcome and it can happen. Is there an apathy within Westville? Is there an apathy when it comes to issues around municipal politics and municipal governance? Because we, we yeah. see, and I, I, when I speak to mayors and councillors from across Canada, there, there seems to be, but there's like, it's in that gray area where there's some places where there seems to be engagement better than others. Yeah. So for yeah. Westville, would if I walked and talked to a hundred people, would they know what's going on at city hall at a given day? Or is there an apathy to say, as long as my garbage is picked up and my water's turned on, I am a happy camper when it comes to municipal politics. Right. And, and the streets are plowed and, and, yeah. and are repaved or potholes filled. Um, yeah, no, I, I think it's the same as most communities uh here uh we have um we have a a small group of people who are very engaged you know and follow follow what we do on a regular basis come to our come to our council meetings uh, faithfully i call them i jokingly <laughs> call them I, I refer to them as the loyal opposition because you know you have no opposition in municipal politics right so they serve that role you know uh we have a we have a session at the end of our council meetings when we allow for public input any public engagement session we call it and uh, a lot of times they they will speak and uh, comment on something that's going on 
uh, and and a lot of times there, there's valuable information or suggestions that, that come from it. I, I continually say, look, there's five of us sitting around this table. Um, we can't pretend to know everything that needs to be done in this town or should be done in this town or what's going on in this town. So we need citizen engagement. I'm a I'm strong proponent of, of citizen engagement. And, you know, when I became mayor, that was one of the first things that I did was to say and to organize, we're going to have citizen engagement. And we did. We had several. This was in 2019. Um, and so I, I became I became acting mayor in, in, in July of 2019 because I was deputy mayor at the time. And the mayor of the day uh, took a leave of absence in July. So I became acting mayor. Uh, he then decided to resign in December or thereabouts, a little before December, November, perhaps. And we had a by-election in December. So I resigned my council seat, ran for mayor, became mayor officially in December of 2019. So in January of 2020, that's when we tried to initiate citizen engagement. So you know what happened in uh, March of, you know, late February, March of 20 of 2020. Yeah. So that put an I, end to that. I wonder what that was. Uh... Yeah, that put an end to my engagement sessions, unfortunately, because we were getting good turnouts and we we're getting good feedback, good information. So, uh, you know, we hope to in the next year that we have remaining on, on, on council here on our term to, to continue those sessions because they were invaluable, I think, uh, to, to, to get the pulse of what's going on. But yeah, I, apathy is a, is a very common thing when it comes to municipal politics. Although I will say we have a very, uh, a very engaged, uh, involved community in a lot of respects, you know, through organizations and so on. Citizens uh, in general in, in this town uh, are, are involved in a lot of other aspects. So I want to turn to my second segment now, and this is about the town as a whole, the town of Westville. And before I ask my first question, I'm going to preface it by saying this is the conversation between the mayor and myself. This is not a motion of council. This is not a policy of council. This is not a direction of council. This is the mayor's opinion. So, right. uh, Lenny, in your opinion, what do you see as the biggest issue or issues facing the town today as of recording this episode? Yeah, the biggest issue really is to increase our uh, our uh, tax base, you know, not unlike most small towns probably uh, throughout Canada. So we need more residential and commercial development. Uh, you know, we have, uh, and, and that's one of our, our challenges and one of the ones that we've been working on for the last couple of years. And the, the, the other side of that is that we have many vacant properties in town. We have, we have a fairly large footprint geographically uh you know we're we're a small population town of you know 37 to 3800 people but we have like 14 plus uh, square kilometers of of, of uh, footprint and so we have a lot of uh, vacant uh, properties in town some owned by the town that we own and others owned privately so we have great opportunity you know we don't we're not uh, land poor by any stretch so we need to use utilize those those properties the other thing is that we have a number of those properties that, that we own and, and privately own that are small lots so what we've done is uh, to 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 sort of uh, address that issue is we've created a, a, a what we call a tiny homes policy so one of the things that we're trying to champion and and promote um, to some degree of success so far is to uh, utilize those small lots for smaller homes. And so hence our tiny home policy. Uh, but one of the one of the difficulties that we have with uh, with development, I, I will say, is the fact that we are a, a former mining town. That's why Westville is here because of mining uh, back in the day. And so consequently, we have some issues of, you know, undermining uh, where the shafts were under the town and so on. So subsidence uh, concerns on, on properties. And the difficulty with that is not so much that that exists, but the fact that we, we don't have any certainty as to where it's okay <laughs> and where it is a, a, a problem. Uh, so we need geotechnical studies done, which is, uh, you know, very costly. And so we... We need the, the help of the province in that regard. 
and we're reaching out in that regard. So, Are they coming to the table? Do you mind me asking uh, the political question we're, here? We're, discuss, we're, we're, we're there. We're, we're discussing that. We're we're getting close. We, we certainly had a good, we have through our CAO, we're, we're having good good discussion there and, there and just helping them get an understanding of the issue, you know, because we want to be, we want to help with the housing crisis that's going on, you know, in this province and throughout the country. And we've said that we've, we've, we've indicated that to the provincial government that we're more than willing. And we have, as I said, we have the, uh, the, the properties available, but, you know, one of the snags we've run into with a major developer, a very capable major developer who's come to us and wants to develop a, a fairly large section of vacant property in town is that issue they they can't proceed until they have certainty you know to sign off from a liability perspective and so on that this property is okay to build upon so we need the answers to that before we can proceed so these are things that uh, you know the average person in this town would not be aware of what's going on with all those things because you know nothing has happened yet so we can't announce them so there's many things of that nature that are going on but it, you know, it's it, it's it's more positive than negative because we are, I think, at that stage where we can make some of these things happen, and 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 they will be in a small town like this. It doesn't take a lot as far as development and change to make a significant difference. I mean, be a game changer for for our town, and so that's the you know as far as challenges go, that's the number one challenge is that you know raising the the. Uh, the tax base so that we have more revenue because you know it's, it's the major it's the only revenue source we have other than what we get from funding from the government right so in so I'm, order gonna, to, I'm gonna yeah. challenge you a little bit here if, if you don't mind because yeah. there's a lot of things that seem to be in the pipe works that you're dealing with working with the provincial government developers are knocking on your door saying hey we want to develop but you are the mayor for here and now while you, that's great that you things are potentially going to be uh, re, re, ramified by the end of next year, or two years, five years, ten years from now, you are the mayor from here and now. So until you get those developers, the, the developments built or the provincial government coming to the table with money to help uh, alleviate some of those pressures, how do you as mayor and council try to address these sort of tax base issues of increasing the tax base? without doing it on the back of the residents today and now, because I can imagine people are struggling. There's an affordability crisis across this country and you as mayor don't want to put, uh, put the growth of the community on the backs of everyday residents who are already struggling enough. Yeah. And that's the, there you have it. There's the challenge. Right? <laughs> uh, and, and we did, we, we, we had to raise our, uh, our tax rate uh, and during the last budget uh, this, this, this year, uh, because in order to maintain the service level that residents expect, and and, and rightly so, uh, and in order to do some capital projects that needed to be done, uh, you know, although we can we we had to borrow some you know significant amount of money to do that, but we had we have the former gas tax money from the federal government that we can utilize for infrastructure as well, but um, you know um, we have to be proactive in that way too because we can't and and as you say we i have one year left in this position and i can't saddle the 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 uh you know the successors that come come along but at the same time we can't go backwards and we can't uh, you reach a certain point where okay it's either we 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 have no choice because we haven't had the development yet um so our tax base is the same but we need to we need to do this infrastructure work because it's like you know you can pay me now you can pay me later and unfortunately that's one of the things that we're, we're trying to catch up on some of the stuff that we're dealing with this year should have been done several years ago many years ago and uh, they were put off uh, so you know this is the, that's the dilemma it, it's a but I, I say to people you know uh, give us a little bit of time and. Some of the things we're working on, I'm more than optimistic. It, it may be after my time, but I'm very optimistic that it'll it'll mean we'll have more revenue. We'll be able to do some of these things that we need to do in the town, and it won't be a burden on you individually. You know, you'll you'll get the reward from. We'll all share in the rewards, really. 
Now, if I go talk to 100 people in your community today and ask them what their biggest issues are, they're going to tell me some different things, potholes, oh. snow clearing, so on and so forth. You as you as mayor and you as a council have to address all those individual issues because they believe that the residents believe if they're if their issue, it's the most pressing issue to them. Yeah. So how do you grow the city, grow the community, I should say, without forgetting about the individual people in the community? Because you don't have an unlimited supply of money. You've just said that, and it's pretty clear from all the conversations I have. People, The municipalities are struggling to address day-to-day -day issues right now. How do you see yourself in trying to weigh the balances of the community with the individual issues as well that people are struggling with? Well, and that goes back to the, what I was saying earlier about, you know, you need to engage people, right? You need to, yeah. we need to know that. We need to know what they're, what they see. You but, know, we hear some of it, obviously you, you do hear those things. And as generally when they have an issue or a concern, you know, in their little, in their section of town. And we just had that recently with regard to one, one street in town where the uh, residents were rightly so uh, greatly concerned about speeding you know of, of excessive speeds and uh, and so we had a community meeting those people came and met with the police chief and and myself and members of council and and um, the cao and you know we're working on a plan to work together to, to to resolve that and that's one of the you know i i, I would hope that one of the one of the uh positive and and assets of, of a being in a small town is you can do those things you know and but we need them and it goes back in my opinion to answer that question, uh, we need their we need their involvement, and I always I always basically try to do that to say, okay, what can you bring to the table? What can you suggest? Or what can how can you help us with this? And you know, I, I know people will say, well, you're, you're the guys that are running this show. You know, you're the guys that need to do these things. Uh, why are you asking me? Well, you know, we're a small community, and we need people to to come forward to to do those things. So. It's fostering that sort of mentality, I think, in my thought, um, in my opinion, at least, that is how you approach those things. And uh, yeah, you're absolutely right, Chris. Uh, you know, what 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 citizens, what individual people may see as being the issues are, are once again, maybe things that we don't see as a council. We're looking at the big picture, and uh, um, but you do have to get down into the weeds sometimes as well uh, and, and to, to make these... Uh, to, to complete the big picture, really. So uh, almost 14 years as a municipal councillor, as three years as Kentville, and then uh, almost 11 years as a uh, uh, Westville councillor and mayor. Um, I can imagine the word no has come up a few times over the years to say, unfortunately, we can't do that. Unfortunately, we'd love to have a big giant indoor grand pool. We can't do that. Um, right. Is no a hard word to say in municipal politics when you want to help everyone? Because most people get involved municipally to help their community. Absolutely, and you know, and as I said I was a social worker, so I come from that mentality, right? <laughs> uh, you want to you want to solve everything for everybody. Uh, but yeah, no, I I, I agree, and, and and that little word, that little two letter word, uh, for me personally, you know, once again personally, has always been a difficult thing to say, uh, but. You know, I guess if you don't, you know, I, I have learned that, that, yes, there are times when it's just, it, it's practically, it is impossible to provide or to do what someone's asking you to do. And I, I try to, I try to explain the reasoning why, you know, and it's not always acceptable. It's not always uh, the answer that they're looking for. Um, most of that, as you said before, comes around things uh, pertaining to streets is, is a big one, right? Uh, the condition of their street or or, or, or things of that nature that they're looking for. And uh, we, I, I try to explain, and you know, we've gone to a, a, a very uh, a manageable sort of system where it's not a subjective decision that we make as counselors as to what needs to be done in what part of town. Uh, we do asset man, you know, very big on asset management in the last number of years, and developed a, uh, you know, a, a protocol for what we need to do and where we need to do it. Money be money available, and and do it on a on a point system and a rating system. So I try to explain that to to people, and it, that that pertains to a lot of other things that that you come upon in town. But yeah, it's it's never easy to it's never easy to be the person that 
they expect to get the answer from and and you have to give them the the negative answer no question about it difficult so i want to turn to my last segment because i am cautious of time here and i know you are a busy man because i follow you on social media and i see that you're always <laughs> holding coffee chats <laughs> but I want to talk about my favorite subject on these shows because I like visiting local communities here in Canada. I like spending my economic tourism dollars here in Canada. So for you, for for those who are listening, who might mm-hmm. be saying, you know what, Lenny seems like a good guy. Seems like I want to come visit Westville this year or maybe next summer. What should people do from a tourism aspect in the town of Westville, Nova Scotia? Well, I, Chris, I'll answer that, but I, I'm going to—it's going to be broader than just the town of Westville. Go you know, for I'm, it. I'm going to talk about Pictou County in general because I'm a—I'm a big proponent of you know the area uh, as opposed to being in our little silo here. So, uh, as I said earlier, you know that's that's how I got involved in this crazy business. Uh, so I—I I consider myself to be a resident of Pictou County who lives in the town of Westville. Um, yeah, so we have a lot to offer. We number one, uh, you know, here in the town, for example, uh, we have uh, a beautiful park uh, in the center of our town with walking trails and so on, uh, Acadia Park, um, that I would highly recommend people coming to uh, see. We have a we have the uh, here in the in the building that I'm currently in our, our town office uh, civic center. We have uh, a military museum. Uh, which is the Pictou County Military Museum. So anyone uh, interested in military history and so on, uh, it's it's an amazing, amazing sort of an unkept, uh, you know, un, uh, you know, best kept gem. <laughs> the gem, yes. Uh, we have that in the town. We also in in the town of Westville have the distinction of having uh, the longest uh, continuously running celebration of Canada Day in Canada uh, on July first. Uh, back going back to Dominion Day previous to Canada being being in Canada Day, so uh, I don't I can't I lose the math and so I won't even try to say the number of years because I'll get it wrong, but it is uh, you know some people in this town who are historically uh, minded uh, have done the research and we have the the longest and 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 it's a huge celebration for a small town of like I said before 37 3800 people we have you know generally. 14,000 people or more come to town on July 1st. And in fact, for the whole week uh, leading up to July 1st, there's celebrations, there's events going on in the town of Westville. So, you know, uh, people tend to migrate here on July 1st in particular. Um, we have a major street parade. We have major fireworks in the evening and so on and, and all kinds of events going on. So I, if, if it happens to be around that time and I'd highly, highly suggest that, Beyond our, our town boundaries, then we have many things in Pictou County. We we have the uh, we have the tremendous beaches uh, with the you know with the Northumberland Strait uh, uh, between us and, and and PEI, and reputed to be the the warmest waters uh, you know north of the Carolinas because that's the way the waters come up, and it's true, it is. Uh, so beautiful beaches with lots of hiking trails and walking trails around the county, uh, the town of Picto. Uh, is a is an ocean front, you know, it has a harbor there that uh, has welcomed the, the ship Hector 250 years ago. So it's the 250th anniversary of the ship Hector arriving uh, here, uh, which brought the uh, first settlers from Scotland uh, 250 years ago to the shores of Pictou County. Um, so it hits our Scottish heritage. Uh, you know, and in Stellarton, we have the uh, uh, Museum of Industry, which is also another, you know, gem. Uh, with uh, with great artifacts and, and information on on the history of uh, the industrial history of Pictou County, which is which is long and, and vast, and our coal mining history, of course. So you know those are just a couple of things, and and Glasgow are you know basically the uh, professional and business center of the county, uh, with lots of uh, things to do there, and a beautiful waterfront along the river and uh, trails and and so on there as well. So there's lots of things uh, to take in in in, in the greater uh, Westville uh, surrounding area. And, well, and, I, and then if you happen to be if you happen to be here on a through the week on a Wednesday uh, as of today, if I'm still in office, uh, I generally have what I call referred to as my open door session on Wednesday. Uh, so uh, you know, don't have to explain it more than that. Hopefully, that uh, that was one of the promises I made when I became mayor as well. Uh, that the door is always open, and uh, particularly on on this day, that come and I don't set the agenda. Whoever wants to talk about anything and everything. So yeah, come and see us, Chris, and uh, 
and, and uh, bring people with you. We, we, I, we... I certainly will. Uh, this summer, next summer, I should say, so 2024 summer, I'm hoping, knock on wood, to be doing a massive tour through the Atlantic provinces to stopping at all mm. the communities that have come on my show. So mm. Westville is on that docket to make sure that I do uh, visit while I'm in Nova Scotia and the Atlantic uh, Maritime provinces. So I will certainly do that. But I okay. want to end. I want to end on sort of the million dollar question, and I ask this to all municipal leaders. And if you've listened to the show, you kind of know what it, what it is. But it's the most important one, I think, because everyone has their own reasons why they love their community. So for you, what makes the town of Westville such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? Well, definitely, it's a, it's the people. Uh, number one, that uh, you know, we we do. I, I mentioned this before, probably, but we have. You know, you asked about engagement and so on or apathy. Well, yeah, I mean, we have uh, we have citizens that Fiona last year, uh, you know, basically was the great example uh, of community coming together, uh, neighbors helping neighbors, you know, unrequested. And I had that experience myself, you know, had neighbors behind me and it happened to be that a few trees that were on their property came down to my property. And, you know, without even asking or uh, raising, you know, the, the question, uh, they came and, and had those cleaned up, you know, without without me uh, asking them to do so. Just a one example, but all throughout the town, that was the case. So, you know, uh, what makes it great is that I, I think, uh, and this is a motto, I know that some towns have adopted, but it, it applies to Westville, and that is, you know, a small town with a with a big heart. Uh, and I think uh, even our neighbors around us often, when I'm out at other events and so on, refer to to the town in that way. They they say, you know, it's it's a great place to live. We are basically a residential community, and that's what we strive to be. And that's sort of our one of the things we talked about in strategic planning. That you know, there's nothing wrong with that. We need that. So uh, we're, we're that's why I was talking about the the residential development. Uh, uh, previously that we need to uh, build on that. The other thing is that we're, you know, we're proximity wise, we are, you know, uh, a couple hours from Cape Breton, which is, you know, a beautiful part of the world. Uh, we're uh, an hour from the, from the international airport, an hour and a half from the, from the city of, of, of Halifax. So, you know, proximity wise, we're, we're in a great location. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's the, the spirit of the people uh, that that motivates me, uh, I believe. I would say, uh, in, in this town, and you know, just the, the the coming together when needed. And I, you know, one one of the things that I always think about, and I, I probably people are tired of me saying it, but we we have events that go on in town, you know, community get-togethers, and I think particularly of a Christmas, we have a social committee in town. Uh, that organizes a Christmas uh, concert uh, every year. And, it, and it's held here in our gymnasium in the town. We have a gymnasium in our civic center. And I'm struck by this every every time, and I say it probably, like I said, people are probably tired of me hearing hearing me say it, but it's it's our it's our uh, you know hallmark moment. Yeah, it, it reminds me of you know the those uh, Hallmark movies when you see the small community coming together to celebrate and, and and join together and and there's been many instances of that in this town that we when we have events and I'm I think that way and so you know if someone if someone has seen the Hallmark movies and think oh what a night that would be a great community to be in well that's I think that's the best way I can summarize what what this town is like. Lenny, I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for sitting down and taking time out of your schedule to do this. It's an honor to speak with municipal leaders from across Canada, and you, your your desire to make your community better shines through in our in our forty five minute conversation. So thank you so much, and thank you for serving your community. I don't think municipal leaders hear that enough, and I want to change that. So thank you for serving your community and for taking time and being part of the show. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Chris. I appreciate the invitation. Thank you for joining us for another great episode of the Cross Border Interviews. Your continued interest in diving deep into the issues that shape our communities across Canada is both inspiring and essential to our mission of the show. Now, as we wrap up, it is my hope that you've gained valuable insights into the intricate world of municipal politics from our guest. Now, if you found this dialogue as engaging as I did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button today. 
By subscribing, you're not just staying up to date with the latest conversations, but you're also playing a vital role in supporting our endeavor to bring you more meaningful content like you saw today. Now, we couldn't embark on this journey without your support as well. Creating content that sheds light on the issues affecting municipalities requires dedication and resources. Now, if you believe in our mission and want to help us to continue to grow, please consider visiting our support page, conveniently linked in the show notes, or by visiting www.crossborderinterviews.ca. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in ensuring that we can keep delivering the kind of content that you've come to expect from us. Now, once again, thank you for being part of the Cross Border Interviews community. Your engagement is what fuels our passion for shedding light on the issues that truly matter. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.